Hello everyone and welcome back to the Helioscope PDX channel. Helioscope PDX is the largest comic book collective in the United States and we are based in Portland, Oregon and today I'm speaking with my studio mate Steve Lieber and his writer, not a studio mate but friend of the studio, Matt Fraction. Thank you so much for joining us or me <laughs> today you guys. <laughs> the royal the royal Leo. Thank you. Thank you Leo. Yeah. Thank you very much. So your book is Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen and it's a comedy it's hilarious and you, 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 you actually us... you miss you miss you mispronounced it it's superman's pal jimmy olsen <laughs> you have to say it like that it's about a superman's pal jimmy olsen and the kind <laughs> of uh, yeah that's i guess that's it that's the pitch cool wow uh, nice. superman's superman's best friend uh uh gets tangled up in a murder plot uh, and has to solve his own his own murder while being on the run and unable to rely on Superman and uh, goes on a madcap uh, tour through the DC universe and um, uh, that's it. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, there's a lot of things I loved about this series. And one of them was all of the cracking jokes at Batman and Gotham City in general. I also really loved your cityscapes, Steve. Those were awesome. And um, I also really liked the format you guys use where each issue was sectioned off into kind of smaller sections and each section had this hilariously written intro in an old school format, but with modern day humor writing, I should say. That was really cool, very smart, I loved it. That, that was one of my favorite things about Matt's whole concept for the series was taking T taking the, the, the shell, the format, the structure of old Jimmy Olsen comics, which were all completely unrelated stories, uh, each of which uh, would have been the strangest day for an entire lineage's life. Not just not just one person, but but like they're you would, you would still tell you would still tell stories about the time your your uncle, your great uncle turned into a turtle or whatever. <laughs> like exactly. Yeah. Um, and and the Jimmy comic was an, it was an anthology, so there'd be three or four of these insane stories every single month, oh. um, and uh, like none of them were like it never transcends like the promise of the premise, which is kind of the gift of them all being short stories. You're not stuck with Jimmy being a turtle for twenty pages. It's like it's a lean and mean eight pages in and out. And if you're bored, stay tuned. There's two other crazy things coming. You know. One of the things to, uh, uh, that I think Steve was so perfect for was, you know, the, the DC universe, the, the, all of the characters have their own cities uh, that are as much a character in their mythos as, as, you know, Gotham is as much a part of Batman as Batman is. And, and it's, Steve is so versatile that every kind of, even places that were just in for a minute, as he imbues with such kind of um, uh, character, you know, and life and, and, Gotham looks different than Metropolis and Metropolis looks different than all the other, you know, I don't even, I don't, I don't want to, you know, spoil all the other places we go. Uh, I hate geographic spoilers. Oh, don't tell me what's west of here. Uh -uh. DC, it would be a spoiler. I mean, the, 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 their map is a mystery. Yeah. I don't actually know that, that we might have been bringing L, 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 uh, Virginia Westbrook with L, Elmond, Elrond. What was it? Elrond Hubbardton? Back that might not have been in continuity post until us. We may have brought that back from crisis. I'm not. I'm not sure. One of the, the the gifts of working on this book was that uh, because there were it was built out of so many linked short stories. Uh, Matt gave me the chance to play in a bunch of different genres. There's mm. there's scenes where I got to be a crime artist. Um, scenes where I got to be a straight superhero artist. Scenes where I got to be <laughs> to be uh, a kid strip artist drawing Little Archie in 1950. It was, Western, yeah, yeah, science fiction, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. just one after the other. Um, the, the, the the possibility of getting tired of doing something just wasn't there because there was always something new. That's awesome. So that may have answered one of the questions I was going to ask, which is, what is the thing you loved most about working on this series? Would that be your answer, Steve? I think the thing I love most was uh, the, the working in different genres is great, but ultimately getting to, to, to deliver the funny. That's the greatest gift of all. There's a whole world of humorous comics that aren't actually funny. They're, they're kind of funny in theory. Comics, comics yes. funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's, 
this this isn't comics funny. This is just funny. This this is this is funny by TV standards, by film standards, by by Quibi standards, whatever media you care to. <laughs> Speaking of, it's going on sale today at three o'clock, uh, uh, Quibi, uh, Quibi. So if anybody wants to go in on it with me, I'm going to buy it, I think. I'm going to try to, I got like 80 bucks, 85 bucks. I figure we can uh, kick around and buy our own vertical. And uh, uh, this is going to be exciting, <laughs> exciting times. Oh, Steve was my favorite part of the book uh, because he, like, I hate looking, I just don't look at my stuff after it goes to you know once if i can avoid it once it goes to press you know and 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 it's and it's really a squint when it comes time for lettering but like with steve it's so additive and i've been working a lot lately like my sort of rewrite process is kind of more of a of a of a of a process of dewriting and taking away more and more and more and more as much as i can and and with with steve he carries so much so effortlessly i can just get rid of all kinds of things and just try to reduce and, and make better and make sharper and make, make funnier. Um, it's funny. I was uh, it, it, going through various comedies and stuff with my kids uh, uh, and we watched um, real genius, or, uh, oh, uh, uh, yeah. which was a big hit. Um, um, uh, and there was a, a sincerity and a, and a sweetness and, you know, like, like it was, it was great. And then like, Oh, you guys will love top secret. Uh, it's the same guy. It's the movie he did next. And so we watched Top Secret. And like they would laugh and, and kind of react. But at one point, like Henry was like, I don't know if this is a real guy. Like, is this actually happening? You know, like he was like so kind of unmoored in the craziness of like the Zucker, Abram Zucker stuff that it wasn't until like, no, 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 it's all ridiculous. The idea, it's all, it's all stupid. It's all good. But like, there was a moment of like, oh, I don't, I'm not moored to anyone. He's not a real person. That's not a real character. I don't think that scene just, you know, like he, like, and St Steve just infuses everything with, with a, a, a weight and a, and a, and a, and a gravity and a, um, a, like a reality that then we can do things like, you know, arm fall off boy and butt fall off Gima and, and like, this, because of how Steve does it. Um, otherwise, like it's sort of that, that and, and that, that was fun to see in execution and then and then realize how much of me I could just kind of try to get out of the way. Awesome. That leads me to Swamp Thong. Can we talk a little bit about Swamp Thong? Mm. <laughs> Steve, go nuts. Um, I, I, uh, I think um, Swamp Thong first appeared in there because Yes, <laughs> because um, uh, Jimmy was was uh, making his living as a um, as a, a YouTube troll, and was was visiting various places in, in Gotham. And, and the, the gag being, he's the only part of the Daily Planet that makes money anymore. Uh, but he's too expensive to keep in Metropolis, so they want him to go be Jimmy Olsen anywhere but Metropolis. So he goes to Gotham. I had to respond to the Waldo Jimmy with oh. actual Swamp Thong. Yes, yeah, yeah. The breakout character of the book is Swamp Thong. Yeah, who works security at the um, the Futility Belt. The Futility Belt. <laughs> this was this 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 figure was customized for me by uh, a, a very enthusiastic fan. Uh, he's, he took an actual Swamp Thing figure, somehow molded him a, a black security T-shirt, uh, gave him a little mag light, and he's holding somebody's ID in his hand because, of course, he works as a bouncer. And yeah, he's 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 wearing a a, a speedo and and doing it well. <laughs> Thank you. Th that was a gag that that uh, when when I I read it in the in the script, I couldn't draw for about 15 minutes because I was laughing too hard. And it was, I, I couldn't rely on my hand to hit the, to hit the paper correctly. Uh, I, I also like, I mean, I, I don't, I would do things like I'll say something and I don't know what it means or what it looks like. Like, Oh, it's Swamp Thong. Oh. He's working security, and, and, and you know what I mean. And like, like, and part of it is like, let's see, is anyone paying attention? Is anyone reading? You know, like, is anyone in editorial looking at this? Or, well, and, and then then part of it's just like, I would not think of creating Swamp Thong the way Steve created Swamp Thong. So clearly, I've made the right decision. 
Well, it, and it, it, it was the same. It was the same panel where we, we where where Matt also invented the, the Phantom Swinger, right. which was <laughs> Jimmy in, in little little leopard skin booty shorts, uh, and, right. and the Phantom Stranger. But the, but the cool dad, but the cool dad turtleneck, and the, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, hilarious! Yeah, the, uh, the, the the strangest part was was when I was lining up uh, photo reference for that thing, and I I had to make uh, everybody in the studio stand in line like they're like they're waiting to be led into a club, and I, I needed everyone to look bored, at, you know, bored and kind of unhappy as I'm just falling out of out of my chair laughing like an idiot, and trying to keep them to keep a straight face so I can get decent reference. I sometimes feel genuinely bad for what for what books like this do to the people whose job it is to actually keep all these comics in some sort of uh, organized shared universe um, where where everything happens according to the same set of rules. Oh, Steve, um, that's called Wikipedia, and it's not a job; it's all volunteer work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, though, there's, there's 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 it's so elastic. To begin with, that, that that I think as long as you're not making fun of the elasticity, you know, it, it kind of works. If it's too goofy, like like if it's too goofy, okay, don't pay attention. But at the same time, like you know, Batman's walking around with Joker's head and a lantern, and it's talking to him. That's pretty fucking funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so you know, you know, like like I, I, it's all from a. It was, you know, it was all from a place of love. It's all stuff that, like, we also made up very little, <laughs> which is kind of the the craziest thing. Is is yeah. there were care there's throwaway things here and there, but like uh, arm fall off, boy, that was not us. You know that the sort of the seed was well planted. So no way. As someone who didn't really grow up reading DC or Marvel comics, I grew up reading the newspaper and web comics. A lot of the uh, like the background that you put in this series kind of goes over my head but it's so out of this world and ridiculous that it's still really funny to someone who yeah. doesn't know the history That's, i think the consistency is more important than continuity and like yeah. hey if it got if it got the laugh and you understood the function of the character in the piece that's all that mattered like what kind of superheroes live in in, in west virginia a guy whose arms fall off that's how bottom of the barrel jimmy is at this point you know what i mean and it's, it's sort of <laughs> he's out of places to go he's running out of places to hide and it's that that's the point not the arm falls off, but like, you know, it helps that the arm falls off. I'm, I'm lucky that my natural drawing style uh, can incorporate drawing that, that sort of ridiculousness and, and ordinary people at the same time so that it all feels like they're made of the same stuff and live in the same world. And that, that's, for me, that's the key to, to, to selling it right there is that it, it all has to feel like it's like it's walking on the same floor. You did a that's you did a, a the Batmobile racing down the street and like it splashes water on a kid and the kid's crying and the dad's like, it's <laughs> one of those little like it totally played it totally made sense it totally worked it's not an angle you traditionally see in a Batman comic but surely it's happened. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it, little it, stuff it has... like that is just perfect. I learn something new every time I work on a new project. What is something? but that both of you learned while working on this project that you hadn't really, well, I guess obviously hadn't learned before. <laughs> you guys are already pros. <laughs> it's, it's the end of burn after reading. What have we learned? What, what have we yeah. learned here? <laughs> uh. I, uh, um, I had been pushing this idea that time is space in comics. Um, like as sort of thinking about it as a writer that like, Oh, that kind of means time is a direction. And it's, it's just as much of a cognitive buy-in from a reader's perspective that a character is moving from left to right as it is that they're going from past to future. Um, and so I wanted to try and organize this series around themes per issue are these kind of loose concepts that this is the reason why these stories happen in this issue is because they tie into this theme like the third issue is the one where like everybody dies right is that's the one about dying and there's the one so there's so realizing that 
using these chapters as kind of all we got to do is get it's like all killer no filler all we got to do is hit the funny thing the cool thing the good thing the important thing and then we can get out before it gets boring and that if we're, we're, we're kind of popping in and popping out that uh, there are other kinds of unities you can impose on a narrative other than this happened and that happened and that happened and that happened at one, two, three, four, five. Like you can go one, five, two, four, three, and that will work if all of the numbers are green, right? Oh, all the numbers are green. So I understand. And then I can put together how the sequence goes. You know what I mean? Like that, I, I, so I mean, working with that thematically concurrent to Jimmy. And so the idea was like, well, can you do this in a Superman comic? Can you do this in, in a big DC comic and, and not, you know, uh, uh, not lose anybody or whatever, and 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 uh, or at least not get fired for doing it. So, so I don't know that it worked, but it was a, a formal thing. I was definitely trying, which is like the very most heady art school, uh, a serious way to talk about a comic where a character's butt falls off. But <laughs> but it's true. But I wanted, but I also felt like there's this logic and this underpinning to the reason why all of these Jimmy story or stories are happening in the order they're happening. The craziness will also be grounded by that logic that, that gives us a, 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 a superimposed order that the rest of the chaos won't get too chaotic or too random. It won't feel like top secret. It'll, it'll, you know, be a little more cogent, I hope. Yeah, it mm -hmm. totally succeeded. I'm so glad that was your answer because that's something I noticed while reading the series is that, the way it jumped around was also unique to something I've never seen in comics before. And it was coherent. Um, whereas in comics, a lot of the time, like flash forwards and flashbacks like that can be really con confusing to the reader, but it wasn't confusing. And how did you go about structuring the story? Like you plan ahead. Did you outline all of it before you started writing? Yeah. A lot of it. Um, a lot of index cards uh, and a lot of kind of treating index cards like Lego. Um, and a lot of math and a lot of, well, okay, if this scene goes in this issue, it can be eight pages, but if it goes in this issue, it needs to be seven because I've already got 13 pages spoken for, you know what I mean? This is a lot of kind of algebraic consideration. Um, um, and it's another place where working with somebody like Steve is, is, priceless because there's someone who's going to make it all make sense uh, visually, no matter how out there. I don't even know some of those stories. I don't even know the order that they necessarily come in. It is not ultimately important when they happened, just that they happened. Um, and like, Oh, isn't that interesting? Isn't that something about the elasticity of, of the kind of way we tell stories and the way we are so adapt to uh, adept at adapting to narrative. Yeah, um, awesome. Matt would would show me his his notebooks when you know, when we were working on this early on, and the the the, the amount of notes and, and possibilities and arrows pointing to things back and forth. I, I felt like 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 the the, the like Jimmy, John Doe and Seven. Yeah, I, I when I was drawing the Jimmy uh, with the crazy wall scenes, I I wondered if if this if this if this was your your Harvey Picard moment to to just be writing autobiography for somebody else to draw. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was it was sort of like mm, yeah, I guess probably so, probably in some subconscious way. Uh, um, um, but but yeah, it was also a little like it was kind of a. Uh, I knew that you could do it. I knew that the information kind of part of it would work, and it would sort of make a statement at the end of that third issue where, you know, kind of the vagaries of the direct market, you know, your first issue sells this, the second one sells this, the third one sells this, and then the fourth one sells more. Uh, if, you know, if you uh, traditionally like third issues are hard to find in the world. Yeah. So I knew that if they could kind of make this moment in the third issue that this is why we've done this the way we've done this the last it, you know what I mean? Or maybe it was, it was the fourth yeah. issue. Whatever it was, it was a kind of like, this needs to come here to show everyone, trust us. There is a lot. It, it will make sense to you as it makes sense to the characters, you know? But also just a chance to break out of that moment where someone has to explain. The other thing is losing the linear A to B to C of it. 
we don't know when exactly Jimmy is picking what up and what he's put together. And what do we know that he doesn't? And so at some point he had to explain it to someone. And like, how do you get out of, oh, this could be three pages of two people in a room, or we could have Jimmy climbing on a red line from a photograph, on a, you know, and all that stuff. Hats off to Matt, by the way, because uh, most writers would, would, uh, would kind of drop that one on your desk and say, here, you figure it out. Matt worked it out in a diagram in a way that, that, that Jimmy could, could logically right. move through all this, through all the, that 2D space, uh, explaining things as he goes. And it, it worked like a dream. Uh, Steve, did you have something, an, an answer to what did you learn working on this project? Um, I, I was surprised at how difficult it was to draw Superman as a supporting character. Um, with oh. yeah, yeah, decades of, of doing this for a living, every instinct I have says, this guy gets the light. This guy gets center stage. This, is, this, this, this guy is who the story is about. But it's not about him. It's about his pal. So I, it, I had to, I had to turn Superman into the into Barney Rubble. I had to, <laughs> I, I, you know, he had to be, he, he had to be Ed Norton. Uh, it, it was, it was really, really tricky. I had to keep recomposing those those panels to to, to, to get this guy off center stage and, and re remind us that 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 the, the 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 kid with the bow tie is the one you're supposed to be looking at. Jimmy Very even yells at his little even yells at his little camera drone at one point like no 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 don't don't film me film him like that's the Very money clever what is something that you wish people would ask you about this series that they haven't asked before and will you please answer your own question I think the the most important thing that I want people to get is that it's it's not top secret it's uh, it's not just a collection of gags. It's there is a story here, and a solid story with heart uh, and feelings and, uh, and and character movement, and, and to reassure them that the the scrambled timeline of the stories is there for a reason, and that it does resolve. Yeah, you know, actually, what did you learn is a really good one. Oh, cool. And and that that it not only gets me out of having to answer because I already did, but. <laughs> But that's a really good one because that's a, like that's sort of a a thing I do in all of my notebooks at the end of a thing at the end of a project is like what do we learn Charlie Brown and kind of just for the sake of saying it for myself like it's important I think to look back what worked what didn't work what did you try what did you fail you know what do you want to do better what what won't you do again that kind of thing all right do you have any uh, last words that you feel like saying well, we could tell people that the 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 trade paperback. Uh, will be in stores October 27th, everywhere as far as I know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've got a, a huge, huge stack of them uh, arriving at my house later today that I'm going to have to sketch in every single one of them. Oh no, oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> why, why, oh, what no. happened? Why was that me? Was that... I Tell, them what, Urkel. <laughs> Tell them what you did. Uh, the new, we, have a, we have a newsletter. Kelly Sue and I have like a newsletter, and and uh, you know, I, I was my friend Elsa Chartier's uh, Kickstarter is, is wrapping up, and I'm doing a thing for that. So it's kind of making getting word out about about that. And then I was like, oh well, I, there's actually other things coming out. Or in November Volume Three came out today uh, 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 from Image that Elsa and I do, and then Jimmy is next week. And then I and as I as I did the the the, the Jimmy write up, I was like, oh, and Steve is doing this thing on his Etsy store. If you order it from him, he'll sketch in it for you. You're like, hey, if you can't get to a comic shop or you don't want to order it through through uh, through yes, exactly. So you don't want to order it through Amazon, go get it through a you know support a support your local artist. And I said, oh, and hey, if you if you if you do this, with, it was really a chance. I just wrote I wanted to write a joke about a checkout code that was it was just this incredibly long. Like, hey, Steve, I told everybody I'd sign these books too if they order from your store. Just go along with it or something like that. Then I would sign them too, and apparently people did. And I, I, there, I have fifty of these oh. checkout codes. In my <laughs> oh, my oh my gosh! But, but people ordered them. That's good, right? Yeah, yes. congrats on the sales. <laughs> right. But I'm sorry at the same time. <laughs> Wow. Wow. All right. Well, well my bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that ending is fantastic. <laughs>